Imagine a high-tech future city where every building, vehicle and device communicates effortlessly through vast and interconnected network. But what makes this seamless communication possible? So guys, the answer lies in network protocol, which are a set of rules that ensure devices, regardless of brand or operating system, can exchange data efficiently and securely. In this tutorial, we'll break down networking protocols, explore their different types and understand how they function within the OSI model. If you want to learn more, watch this video till the end. But before we move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got professional certificate program in cybersecurity. There are over 100 hours of live classes led by industry experts. You will engage in three capstones, 40 plus projects and integrated labs. You will learn 15 plus tools like Metasploit, Burp Suit, Nmap and many more. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So let's start with understanding first what are network protocols. Network protocols are standardized rules that define how data is sent, received and interpreted across a network. They function as a common language that enables devices ranging from computers to IoT gadgets, basically helping them to communicate efficiently while maintaining security and accuracy. Let's take an analogy of a smart city. Imagine there is a smart city where people from all over the world live and each citizen speaks different language and the language can be compared to like Windows, Linux, Android and iOS. But to ensure smooth communication, all over here, uh, the city enforces a universal language protocol that everyone must follow just like how the internet operates using network protocols. Without these defined rules, the people in the city would descend into chaos and with devices unable to understand each other. Okay. Now, this given scenario actually depicts why there is a need of universal language protocol so that, you know, even if the people, you know, who are speaking different languages, they can communicate effectively. Now, similarly, we have divided types of network protocols. So, the networking protocols can be divided into these major categories. The first one that we have all over here is network communication protocol. This protocol actually ensures seamless data exchange between devices. And then there is network security protocols, which ensure secure communications against cyber threats. Then we have network management protocols, which basically monitor and optimize network performance. Now let us move ahead and try to understand our network communication protocol. So on the first list, we have HTTP protocol. HTTP is the backbone of the internet enabling communication between web browsers and servers. It facilitates the loading of web pages, handling requests and responses for web content. How this actually works is, guys like suppose there's a client who sends the request to the web server, okay? So you can imagine this as the client and it is sending requests to the server. The server processes the request and responds with the requested web page or resource. So similarly, HTTP also operates on a stateless model, meaning each request is independent of the previous one. Typically, this protocol runs on port 80, while HTTPS, the secure version, runs on port 4043. The next protocol that we have all over here is TCP protocol. TCP is kind of a reliable protocol, it is connection-oriented protocol, and it also ensures that data packets are delivered accurately and they are in sequence. It is widely used for applications which require stable data transmissions, such as web browsing, email, and file transfer. Now, how this protocol works, guys? So guys, this protocol establishes a connection using three-way handshake, which is SYN, SYNIAC, and Acknowledgement. So basically what happened, it breaks the data into the packet and numbers them for proper reassembly. Then it resends the packets, which are basically lost, and ensures that data integrity is maintained. Then it provides flow control to prevent congestion. For example, when you download a file from the internet, TCP ensures that all part of the file arrive in the correct order without corruption. So guys, whenever next time you download a file, do remember about the TCP protocol. The next protocol that we have all over here is internet protocol. So IP is responsible for addressing and routing packets across the networks. It assigns unique addresses to devices and ensures that data reaches the correct destination. This protocol works in the following way. Here, 
Suppose every device on the network is assigned an IP address, generally an IPv4 or IPv6 address. And data is divided into packets and sent through different network routes. Routers use IP addresses to forward packets to the correct destination. For example, when you visit a website, your device uses IP to find the server's address and establishes a connection for communication. Next one, you have the UDP protocol. UDP is also a connectionless protocol. It stands for User Datagram Protocol. It is also kind of a fast protocol that transmits data without ensuring delivery or order. It is useful for real-time applications where speed is more critical than reliability. So guys, let us discuss how this protocol works. Basically, UDP protocol sends data packets without establishing a connection. There is no retransmission of lost packets and also it reduces latency by avoiding handshake mechanisms. For example, of this protocol could be online gaming and live streaming use. So they use UDP to maintain low latency and even if some packets are lost, nothing much goes wrong. Then next we have all over here is ICMP protocol or it is also called as Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP is used for diagnostic and error reporting purposes. It helps detect network connectivity issues and ensures that data packets reach their destination. How this protocol works guys? So basically this is used by network devices to send error messages. Commonly utilized by tools like ping and trace routes okay, to test network latency and packet loss. For example, if a website is unreachable, running a ping example.com will use ICMP to check if the server is responding or not. Next one we have all over here is file transfer protocol. FTP is actually designed for transferring files between client and a server and it uses a separate connections for control commands and data transfer. How this protocol works guys, suppose a user logs into an FTP server and commands are sent over the control connection. And here data files are transferred using a separate data connection. For example guys, web developers use FTP to upload and download web files from a hosting server. So guys, these were some of the network communication protocol. Now, let me take you to an analogy. Consider the city's postal system. Imagine all over here that you are sending a parcel from one building to another in this part of the city. Now the first protocol that comes here is TCP IP protocol. Suppose, imagine this protocol working as the courier service. You choose a reliable courier, means a reliable TCP IP protocol, and it ensures that package is delivered in intact and in order. Next protocol is UDP. You can consider UDP as a public announcer. Instead of a courier, you broadcast message over a city's public announcement system such that everyone hears it, but there's no guarantee anyone will respond. Next one we have FTP or the parcel delivery system. It uses a secure delivery truck to send bulk of packages from one place to another. So FTP is playing a role like a truck, okay? Or basically a parcel delivery system. Finally, we have the ICMP protocol, which is like a traffic reporter. This service monitors traffic and alerts courier if certain roads are blocked. I hope so guys would have got a brief idea regarding network management protocol. Now let us move ahead and try to understand about network security protocol. So guys, security protocols protect sensitive data from unauthorized access, cyber attacks, and data breaches. And one such protocol that we have all over here is SFTP protocol, or we call as Secure File Transfer Protocol. Basically, this protocol encrypts the file transfer using public key encryption or authentication. Next one we have all over here is HTTPS protocol, or we call as Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. So this is a secure version of HTTP that encrypts data between browsers and servers. Finally, we have the SSL protocol or secure socket layer. It ensures encrypted communication over the network, preventing eavesdropping and data theft. Now, imagine a security department in your city. So here, the HTTP is, is working like a security gatekeeper. So we have already studied about HTTP. HTTP is, is the secure version of HTTP protocol. It could also be added in the network security protocol. And this protocol could be actually working as a security guard keeper. So you can uh, put an analogy like that. Then you have this protocol like SSL. So SSL will be acting as an encrypted vault, means sensitive documents are stored in this vault to prevent it from hacking. 
and then you have the STP protocol, which are like the secure couriers. Okay, so it says that government officials use trusted couriers only with identity verification to transfer classified documents. So this is how one analogy could be there. You can understand how these protocols are working. So similarly, in the same way, security protocols safeguard digital communication against cyber threats. Now let us move ahead and try to understand our final protocol, which is network management protocol. So guys, network managers require standardized policies and tools to monitor, troubleshoot and maintain a healthy network. And the first protocol that we have all over here is SNMP or simple network management protocol. This protocol enables network administrators to track performance and resolve issues. Next, we have the ICMP protocol. So guys, this protocol sends alert when connectivity problems or congestion arise. Now, let us imagine a scenario like the control center. So SNMP protocol is like the city surveillance. Smart cameras and sensors like monitoring the city's power usage, traffic congestion and Wi-Fi performance. And then we have the ICMP protocol, which actually works as emergency alert system. When traffic congestion occurs, this alerts the system, notifies engineers for immediate troubleshooting. These protocols ensures that, you know, the city remains operational 24 cross 7, just like how network management protocols keep the internet running efficiently. So this is the similar analogy of these protocols. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding network management protocols. Now, let us discuss about layers in OSI model or basically how network protocols work in OSI model. So if I talk about OSI model guys, it stands for Open Systems Interconnection Model. It is a conceptual framework that standardizes communication between devices by dividing it into seven layers. The first one that we have all over here is physical layer. Basically, this defines hardware connection, signal transmission, and bitrate control. The next one that we have all over here is data link layer. This ensures error-free transmission and organizes data into frames. Then we have the network layer. It routes data packets across the network. Then we have the transport layer. It manages flow control, error connection, and delivery sequence. Then we have the session layer. It establishes, maintains, and terminates communication sessions. Next, we have the presentation layer. So this translates, encrypts, and compresses data. And finally, we have the application layer, like the interfaces with user applications like web browsers and email. So let us take an analogy of the seven departments of communication. Imagine sending an important contract to another city. So the physical layer is acting like a post office infrastructure, like the roads, vehicle, which carry the package in the forms of, you know, like for example, the analogy could be like when you send data through cables or Wi-Fi. Then you have the data link layer, which is like a sorting center. The package is checked for, you know, errors and sorted into transport friendly frames. So this is what is happening at the data link layer. Then we have the network layer, which is like the shipping route planner. It determines the best route for delivery. Next, we have the transport layer or the quality assurance department. It ensures all the contract pages are delivered in the right order. Then we have the session layer. So this is like the call center operator. It opens a direct communication channel between sender and the receiver. Then we have the presentation layer or the document formatter. It formats the document or you can say the contract to ensure readability. So finally, we have the application layer, or you can say the recipient's office, where the final document reaches for the recipient and it is ready to use. So this is how uh, it's actually working in our you know, networking protocol, these seven layers of communication. So I've given you a sort of analogy and you could relate it to it. So guys, that was all for today's session. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video on networking protocol. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.